Um, the show is, uh, has been, well, in the making for about nine months. The title came about because it was a, uh, Korea has a family month um, in May, but the show was meant to be then and then it got postponed. But I loved the whole idea of that anyway and kind of ran with that. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was just this idea that kept on growing and growing and growing. It didn't, I don't think it actually even had a title then. Um, and, um, but I, I liked the idea of just it, you know, I mean, my work is quite, you know, it's got a very, it's got quite a dark side to it, but it does on the surface have, you know, a very light side to it. Um, and just the idea of myths, heroes and mad scientists was because I was doing all these drawings and, um, and just coming up with all these different characters and everything. And then I just found that putting all the different aspects together, it was kind of like a Frankenstein, mad scientist kind of thing. And I just felt like the whole uh, title just encompassed the whole show. And, you know, do, I think I've done the show twice. I probably wrecked, I probably destroyed heart about three quarters of it and started again. So it's been, um, you know, uh, just through a lot of filters. Uh, which has been great, having the time, because otherwise it would have happened in May and it wouldn't have been uh, as strong, because it would have been rushed. And, you know, thanks to COVID, um, it was, uh, it really um, enabled me to, you know, spend more time on the show instead of, instead of, um, instead of just quickly getting it out. Well, I mean, there's an obvious answer to that, you know, uh, especially what, with what we've been through with the past two years. I mean, there are people who have just gone above and beyond, um, you know, but I think the world's seen a lot of heroes in the past two years. But, you know, the, there's also the, the hero factor that which I've brought into this, which is um, just about uh, like the superhero that we all, as children, we grow up and see and we kind of want to, you know, embody embodied when we um when we get older and those tiny little um those little things that they give us we um we take them kind of like onto ourselves and we never you know like justice and all these things and and we just kind of hold on to them as we get older and i don't think we realize that it's very subconscious and um and uh you know growing up with like batman superman they all have these like philosophies and and um, it's kind of like a, you know, like a religion, like the uh, Twelve Commandments. But we, we, we take them and we, you know, we grow up with them. And I don't think that we just actually notice that that really kind of has an impact on, on us. To be honest, there's two. Oh, I had 10,000 peppercorns in a blender. Um, that was the first painting I did for the show. And it kind of set the tone. Because usually, actually, I do the um, the backgrounds are quite you know they're they're made on the floor and you know a bit of colour and everything like this. And, but um, these are actually just done um, straight onto the canvas, and I really liked that, like a bit of a change, and it kind of um, made me work a bit more minimalistic at the beginning. But then towards the end, it just it's it switched again. But um, um, that one and the kind of title piece on the banner. Oh, uh, Pray for Grey. Um, I like that one because it's also the abstraction with the characters and, you know, the paint and everything, and I, that, you know, which I love doing, so it's, uh, it's definitely... Um, my, they're, they're, they're the two poles apart, basically, which, with the rest of the show in between. So I, those two are probably my favourites. They're the two bookends, which I really... I will sketch it first, and then, um, and then you know, it's so throwaway. It's like, will that work as a painting? Because you know, I do it, you know, with just pens and everything like this, and so, like, will this work? Because you know how you can make it just fuller and come to life, like with the oils and the spray paint and the pencils and everything else, and pastels. If it's good, and I'm quite impulsive. I just go right. Well, that will work. That won't. This will work, and I just kind of go with my gut feeling a lot of the time. Yeah, and then, and then I start paying, you know, I get the canvas out and, and I would, well, this would work bigger, this would work smaller, um, you know, all these little variations. And then, um, so it's, you know, it starts off as uh, the drawing, but 
and it, it usually looks the same by the end, but it's very, it's much more in depth and deeper than the first drawing. I mean, it's just, you know, I love the, the fact of it just being a, an image and the, you know, it being dynamic. So uh, what I'm trying to convey is, you know, is a, is a visual piece which will make you, you know, your hair stand on the end or your eyes, uh, your pupils dilate, um, you know, to basically what I think looks good. And if it looks like shit, then it doesn't make it to the, um, you know, to the, it just doesn't make it to the final. So it's, it's, uh, it's just meant to be a kind of like a, a moving, you know, image that you'll always just look at and find different things in and just find your own aspects in it. The hardships are that you, you know, you have extremely, you have some real lows, but you have some real highs, and that just comes with the job. Like writer's block, but it's basically artist's block, but it, it just, you know, or where you just think all your work's bad, and then you, you know, and then you're on cloud nine, and you think it's all good, and you go through these waves, but I think as older I've got, you've just learned to, to manage them and, and um, you know, just push on through. But, you know, there are days when you just, um, are, uh, you think, like, yeah, what am I doing? And, um, but it's like anything, I think, and it's, um, you know, it's just finding the good balance between it. And, um, you know, and I'm just so lucky to have, what I consider one of the best jobs in the world. So, um, you know, I'm very thankful that I get to share my art with the rest of the world. Well, I've always been in love with abstraction, and it's marrying the two. Uh, you know, I did animation as a degree, and I love characters. I grew up, you know, drawing them, and but I also grew up with, um, you know, with painting and abstraction and all these different kind of artists I admire. And it's just marrying the two between each other, and it's um, I can't just do one without doing the other. That's the thing. It's like if I do abstraction, I've got to put something, some character or something in there, and if I do the other one, there's got to be some, you know some, you know, sort of messed up uh, pains. It's, it's, just, it's just constantly, uh, you know, going through that stream and, and working out where um, the, the process is, is usually starting with the character and then seeing where I can take that and then putting the abstract on top of it. But um, they are a lot more colourful this time because I wanted to push them further and further and I wanted to, I just wanted them to be bolder. And instead of, you know, with this show um, being my first museum show, I didn't want it to be like, oh, seen it already before, seen it already before. So I just pushed them all to the nth degree where I could feel I could take them without ruining them. Yeah. It's been a long road, you know, been a very long road. And, um, and like anything, I think if you just pursue it and you have a love for it, eventually you'll get there. And it's just practice at the end of the day. It's like anything, like if you're going to become the best doctor in the world or the best architect, you know, you have to practice. And it's, you know, uh, unfortunately my practice, you see the workings out throughout my life. And, you, you know, you can go back in time and see paintings, which I would uh, throw in a blender now. But, um, but then actually you do see paintings when you're like, oh, they, they, um, they weren't too... Too bad, I, I, and I liked seeing where my thinking was as well. But um, now, um, you know, I feel in a very comfortable place. I, you know, don't feel. I know exactly what I'm doing, and it's just very. Um, it's a very uh, interesting place to be right now. Go on holiday. It's been a long nine months and I just think once I get home and I take this all in um, I will um, I just start again and see, uh, see you know where the process takes me um, I think it's just it's going to be good for me to take a bit of time off because you need to do that to let your brain rest and then you know think about what you've done uh, and then come back and reassess it and then you know and see where the next paintings take me.
Right, then it's all over. Thank you.